Right. Welcome, everyone. So um, I'm going to start talking about polynomials today. I guess uh, I'll still review a bit about the ring chapter, but maybe it'll be intermixed with uh, the polynomial stuff. And I guess if I don't, I still don't know if everyone took uh, abstract algebra one last semester, but I mean, I'm still supposed to cover polynomials, I, I think. I really, even if you all took it, I can't just, uh, I can't just skip it, um, I think. Anyway, a couple, just a week of review probably. Um, welcome. So, uh, first thing I should say is I posted homework. Um, uh, so there's homework, uh, it's due next week. And it will do every two weeks after that. Uh, so this first assignment is just um, it's it's mostly review offerings. Um, so if you go on Moodle, the there's a new section here titled homework. You can you can see the the questions here, and you can I don't know you can click this or maybe. Maybe I can't. I think you can click this, but that's that's just for you to tell yourself that you did it. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, you can also so to submit it, you're supposed to go on Gradescope, uh, and if you log into Gradescope, it should look like this, presumably. And you click the course, and then you will see just one assignment. And well, it says submitted, but once you submit it, you can always resubmit it. Um, so, so to submit it, you can either you can do two things. You can either send a PDF if you can scan things, or if you or if you have an app on your phone that makes a PDF. I think there's three ones. And then once you do that, you're supposed to select which question goes with each problem. So you click the page, yeah, you click the page, you click the question, you can do one, more than one page per question. You can do more than one question in a page. Uh, just make sure you do this or otherwise, uh, otherwise this is uh, very, I don't know, the reader might get angry. I might tell the reader to get angry at you and make you resubmit it. And if you don't match all the questions, you will it will pop up saying you're in trouble. Um, oh, it's, I'm gonna get an email every time I do this. You can also submit images. This is a bit more annoying, but basically you get each question and for each question you get to upload something. So you can do more than one image, just select, you know, control click or something. And again, you can send the same image for several uh, several questions. I mean, some of these are short. It shouldn't take you 12 pages. And then you click submit. And well, if you have trouble with it, let me know. And now we can we can do the math thing. So polynomials. So. Uh, I should start saying what a polynomial is. Um, on the other hand, I suspect you know what a polynomial is. What is a polynomial? I'm asking you. It's a sequence of powers of some element. Um, you know, and you can, it's a sum of just powers of some element. Right. So A is an element in a ring. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, 
so so for, so for example a polynomial a polynomial in in the integers is um, to I guess I mean I guess they can have coefficients as well but okay I don't like this definition a lot because this is this is like a polynomial I mean if I do this this is a polynomial in two but um, that is just I mean also this is just the number negative two or something negative two um, so I don't want to say that polynomial is just the value you get when you plug in. I want to talk about polynomials. I want to talk about things like this and say that this is an element of, of the polynomials uh, with coefficients in Z. So I need to, I need to, I don't know, I need to make sense of X I need to talk about X as a symbol. Um, when you when you see when you see calculus, for example, um, you see you see polynomials, but you always think of them as something where you plug in X. But really, I don't want to I don't want to have to plug in anything. Uh, you know. So I should say. I want to talk about polynomials as, as abstract symbols. Plug in anything for X. Um, and there's, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, so, um, I should say, so what was what was a polynomial in, say, in calculus? Probably, probably the last time you saw a polynomial, right? Um, A polynomial was a function. Uh, so a function. So for example, uh, this was a polynomial. It was a function. So, you know, we had a domain, which was the real numbers. Um, he had a a range, which was, I guess, also contain contain the real numbers, um, and I don't want to. I don't want polynomials to. I don't want polynomials to necessarily be functions. Um, I want them to be. I really want to say polynomial is just some sort of sequence of symbols. Um, so. Um, So why don't I want them to be functions anymore? So um, I have two reasons. Honestly, in my life I've been very confused by this. So this is why I'm like making a lot of emphasis. One one reason is that if you take, for example, take the polynomial, this polynomial with integer coefficients. Um, so, um, if this was a function, um, oh, it's everyone. <clears throat> if this was a function, it would have, it would have a domain. Now, what is the, what is the domain? 
the domain is the uh, I mean let me remind you the domain of a function is the the inputs you can have the set of things you can plug in for x So what kind of things can I plug in for X? Um, <clears throat> what kind of, what can I plug in uh, for X in this polynomial and, and get a reasonable, get an answer that makes sense? Just about any, anything, right? Like any kind of real number or complex number? Right, that's, that's, the, that's the thing, exactly. The thing is, I could plug in an integer, but I don't have to plug in an integer. I can plug in a fraction, a real number, a complex number, a quaternion. I could plug in basically anything, anything in any ring. Every ring can. Any ring that contains the integers? So it could be real, complex, rational. It could even be, I could plug in another polynomial. I could say, make x equals to one plus two y, and then think of the, the polynomial substituted and, uh, substituted this way. This is also, it's also the same thing plugging in. So it doesn't really have a domain. It's not really, I mean, it's not a function because um it's i mean a, you, a function has to have domain of sets and and everything in anything in any ring that those things are not a set although i'm definitely not getting into set theory here um i can't just say plug in anything in principle so that's one problem another more concrete problem with saying that uh, polynomials are just special kinds of functions uh, it's sort of uh, similar. Um, so take uh, x cubed as a polynomial in uh, the integers mod 3. <clears throat> So this means, so So what function is this polynomial representing? Uh, well, I mean, if I think of plugging an integer mod three, so I should, I should remind you. So if I take f of zero, I get zero. If I take f of one, I get one. If I take f of two, I get eight, which is uh, well, mod three, it equals two. And then three equals zero. So this is really, um, this is all, all the, this is the whole function. It has three it has three inputs. Um, so if I the input is the same as the output every time, um, you might know you might have seen already that this works for every uh, for z mod p for every prime, the the p power is itself. But just in this example, um, so. Checking all three, uh, what we see is that x is x cubed as functions. Um, for when I plug in anything, I get the same answer. Um, 
for for x and for x cubed. So definitely in calculus, I, I tell my students that these are the exact same function, which is why, well, I mean, everywhere this is the this would be the exact same function. But this is why I don't want to say, I don't want to say, I don't want to make a definition of polynomial where x cubed and x can be the same. For example, I would like to say that one has degree three. Um, I would like to say that they have different degrees, polynomials. So um, another reason, another reason why this shouldn't work is that I can I can plug in other things into x cubed. Um, I mean, this is a polynomial mod three, so I can't really plug in an integer, but I can plug in um, I can plug in more things. Even for example, I would say I can plug in polynomials, but Uh, for example, plug in an element in in this ring. So this ring is made round brackets. This rings this ring is made of sums like this, where a and b are integers mod three and I squared equals uh, negative one. So this is a ring. And it contains C3 as the elements of the form A plus zero times I. So you you will multi you these are essentially like complex numbers, you multiply them the same way. So if I if I do f of i, I do well i cubed is i squared times i, which is negative one times i, I get negative i, which is two i mod three. Um f of i, so f of i is not uh itself. I'm not checking all the details here, but I hope you can believe them or you can check them yourself. So X and X cubed look the same until you plug in enough numbers and then they don't. So I don't want to, I don't want to commit to saying that they're the same, even though every value they give me or the every value they give are the same, because I, I can always, basically you'll see, I can always plug in, find another ring in which uh, the function might be different. So inclusion polynomials shouldn't be functions. Uh, are there any questions? So now I'm gonna go make a definition for polynomials. Um, and the thing, um, well, only, the, I mean, the only thing you need in life is a definition, right? But uh, technically the only thing you need is a definition, but um, it's very important to know why you do things. Um, because if you, you know, if you think of math as just and a lot of abstract definitions and you lose track of why you're doing things, um, really fast you stop being able to do anything. So, um, 
so so polynomial should just be expressions that look like this. And well, there's no, I mean, how do we make sense of what I mean, what I mean by abstract symbol or expressions? Um, we can, I can go like this, um, a polynomial. is um, just a sequence. The point, so polynomial with coefficients in a ring R is a sequence. A0, A1, AN, and then there's zeros. Um, and it has to be eventually zero. And and this is what it is. And now, well, this is this is what polynomial, this is the same information as a polynomial. Um, because what what I mean is that a zero a one blah 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 zero zero zero. I'm just gonna write it as as the as the polynomial I was writing before. But really what I'm defining it as is, is as a sequence. Um, now you can present a sequence in a lot of ways. You can do what I did here, write it as a, as a tuple, as an infinite tuple. You can write it as a table, as a function of the natural number. So for every number you spit out the coefficients or, or you can write it in this way. For a polynomial, you already know the best way to write it, write it is this way. Um, and now that I have a polynomial, I need to tell you how to add them and multiply them. So this is how we define addition and multiplication. A zero, a one, blah, blah, blah. You want to add two sequences. So if I give you the coefficients of two polynomials and I tell you to add them, um, what are the coefficients of the resulting polynomial? A and plus Vn. Thank you, Mason. Um, so just to be clear, I will never ever, no one in their same mind writes polynomials in this way, except uh, well, when you wanna be careful about what they are, which is just for 10 minutes of your life. Uh, this is how you add polynomials, of course. Um, really in, in a same person's language, what I'm saying is that if I want to add a zero plus a one x, uh, blah, 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 plus b zero plus b two x plus blah, 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 what you should do is, um, uh, b zero b one. Well, if the thing is, if x was a number, which is not, it's just some sort of some symbol. I would use the distributive law and the commutative law of addition. Uh, and I would get um, 
<clears throat> what we get is that the coefficients add together. And if we, so this is how we add them. And now you will know how you will multiply them. So this is how we multiply polynomials um, based on their coefficients. So um, I guess we have to think about this a little bit. Um, if you take, I guess this is good um, a moment to practice with some sums. Um, so how do you multiply some sigma notation? Maybe J is how do you how are you supposed to multiply these two sums? Um, I mean I'm trying to define something we already understand pretty well. So how do I uh, multiply these two? I distribute. Um, so this means that I should be, I'm gonna get for every i and every j, I'm gonna get a term here, which is the product of, uh, the product of the terms I get in, in each of them. And if I if I just combine this, um, this is what I get. <clears throat> uh, I I'm trying to define it so you can um, so x to the i times x to the j equals x to the i plus j as you would expect. And and just now rewriting this, say we make L equals to I plus J, then this is the sum in L of, so this is the sum in L. And then we sum for, so now I'm just grouping them. Um, this is the sum if we if I look only at things that add up to L, right? So what I'm saying is you take a a zero v zero, And, and you group them like so by the degree in X. And what you get is, um, is what I wrote down here. You sum, um, you sum together the coefficients whose indices are add to the exponents. So what's the coefficient of x to the fifth in the product? It's a0 v5, a1 v4, a2 v3. You add, add together all the ones that, all the ones, uh, you multiply together all the ones that add to five in this case. So, um, So this is the, um, this, we found the coefficients of X to the L. So uh, if I just write the multiplication again, A0, A1, blah, 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 times B0, B1, blah, blah, blah. What I get is A0, B0, a0 v1 plus a1 v0 
Um, and in the nth position, I have the sum of AI BK. Okay, <clears throat> so this is how you multiply polynomials, um, as you already knew. But um, what I'm doing is I'm defining it in a way that where X really has no meaning. Before, before I would say, you know, if the polynomial was a function, I would have said that for any number X that I plug in there, these all of these things are going to hold. And and then I can get I can get the coefficients. But now I'm saying, what should the coefficients be to ensure that all the properties hold, even if x has no meaning? Um, and this is where we this is where we ended. Okay, so this is what polynomials are. Um, this is what uh, this is how you add them or multiply them. And and now, well, we have um, polynomials, um, addition and multiplication. And the next thing to verify is that I define a ring. Um, so, uh, I should say we the node R square brackets X to be the set of polynomials. With coefficients in X, coefficients in R. So the next thing to check is that R with the sum and the product uh, is a ring. <clears throat> Which, um, I mean, it works, uh, but it is, it is something to check. Um, and I'm not gonna do it uh, completely because I think you will, I will kill you a them if I do. Uh, but um, what is the? But we should check some the some at least some things. Um, what is the zero element in the polynomial ring? What what polynomial doesn't uh, change? Um, what polynomial do you add to anything to get the same sequence with all zeros? Sequence of all zeros, right? All zeros. Um, zero plus zero x plus zero x squared. Uh, and this is, um, we would just, of course, we would just write this uh, zero. Um, what is um, the identity uh, for the multiplication? one in the first century and the rest being zeros. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, it's one and then zeros. Um, or in other words, uh, one plus zero x plus zero x squared, blah, blah, blah. And of course we just write this one. This is the polynomial, the constant polynomial one. Um, uh, so, um, so how do we check? Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to actually do it, but let me go through a little bit of what we, what we are supposed to do here. You should do it um, because you should, everyone should do this at least once in their life. And I mean, if you, I think doing it is doing it yourself is less painful than reading through it. Where is this? Uh, I mean, it's in the book, you can read through it, but 
reading such a tedious thing. Um, it's just tedious, but easy. So why is it a group with a sum? Well, um, the sum is just uh, components wise. So so it will follow not not a R. Oh, oh, I'm in the polynomial room, of course. Um, in the sum, you're only doing the, the sum of R. So this is going to fall really fast from the fact that R is a, is a group with addition. And then we need to check uh, the distributive property. Um, and the um, associated property for uh, for multiplication. And I should say, um, so I'm not going to do this um, because um, you will die if you watch me do this right now. But it's just, you write the definition and it should follow. And if you get confused, well, you can ask me, but also you can find it in the book. Actually, I don't know if the book even does the distributive property. Um, also, so I guess um, I was, well, I, I did say every ring for me would, would be commutative. Um, R is commutative, or R join X, oh, the polynomials are commutative. If R is commutative. Um, if, if R is not commutative, what I just did works as definition for polynomials, uh, but polynomials in, in a non-commutative ring are a lot less useful. Um, as, you, as you probably wouldn't have guessed, honestly. Okay, so so now we know what polynomials are. And of course, so with this definition, so in Z3 of X, X is not X cubed because X has coefficient one in degree one and X cubed has coefficient one in degree zero. And, and these are not the same uh, because to be for two sequences to be the same, uh, the polynomials have to be have to all, all the coefficients have to be the same. So this is exactly what I wanted. Um, is that two polynomials are equal if and only if. They're, all the coefficients are the same. Okay, um, so I guess some words, if you have a polynomial, Uh, like this, um, a zero, a n are called coefficients. As you, I mean, I, I guess, I've been using it already, but sort of assume you know. Um, if a n is not zero, the the biggest uh, the biggest one which is uh, not zero, a n is called the leading coefficient. Um, and n 
is equal to the degree of P. Oh, and if, if An is one, we say um, P is monic. I think these are probably words you've you've seen before. Um, <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry, in that second to last line there, um, where you have if a n equals is not equal zero, what's the after oh. the comma a what is called the leading that that number? So the yeah, the number oh, is okay. called the yeah. leading coefficient. Thank you. Um, and I guess, um, I guess, uh, the degree of the degree of the polynomial zero is, I wouldn't think about this too hard. Uh, let's say that it's minus infinity. This makes things like, you know, most things you say, about degrees work if you if you add this convention for example you say you add the degrees and the degree is not big you, you add polynomials and the degree is never bigger this makes sense if you say that when you add zero it's not bigger than minus infinity um but it's just it, this is not very important um okay any other questions? Okay, so let me ask the question. So what happens to the degree if you multiply polynomials? Um, so say I have um, two polynomials f and g, coefficients in a ring. Um, and say the degree degree of f is two, degree of g is three. What is the degree of f times g? It'll be five, right? It'd be five. Uh, you would think so, but um, it doesn't have to be. It's it's very sad news. Um, well, if we suppose both their leading coefficients are non-zero, so they have something uh, a or something x to the n, and the highest term on the on g, I guess, is something a to the m. Wouldn't the highest degree in their product be m plus n? So yes, exactly. That's the proof I'm about to do, except that rings are rings can be annoying if if it happens that the link coefficients multiply to zero because they could multiply to zero and not be and not be zero. For example, if you take f equals one plus two x, set well degree two, two x squared and g is one plus um three x cubed and they're both coefficient uh, their coefficients are integers mod six then all of a sudden f times g is one plus two x squared plus three x cubed plus six x to the fifth 
which is just um, which is just um, degree three. This the so the the leading term becomes just zero if if you got lucky and the leading terms multiply to zero. So, uh, but I mean, so this is something to keep in mind, but really what happens is what Tiago was saying that the degrees add. Uh, so if this never happens, so let me remind you uh, what an integral domain is, which pretty sure you've seen in the last class. So an integral domain is a ring where to multiply to zero, you need to have a zero. If a b equals zero implies a equals zero or b equals zero. So for example, the integers, um, numbers form integral domains, um, Uh, Z mod of prime is an integral domain, but um, Z mod not a prime is not an integral domain. Um, and, and any non prime, because you take two numbers, you know, Z mod 20, well, since 20 is four times five, that means that four times five is gonna be zero mod 20. So um, the proposition now is that if R is an integral domain, um, and you have two polynomials, then the degree of the product is the sum of the degrees. And the proof, um, Tiago just said it to me, F is A0 plus A1x. So say N is the degree of F and M is the degree of G. So this means that a n is not zero. And if I call the coefficients of, of b, I call them b's, that means that b m is not zero. f times g is a zero v zero plus a lot of stuff. But the important thing is that, that at the end, I have a and B M. So A N is not zero. B M is not zero. R is a domain, it's an integral domain. That implies that um, the product of two non-zero things is not zero. So the degree of fg is n plus m as desired. And that's it. <clears throat> okay, any questions? Okay, well, if there's no questions, uh, I hope I hope if there's no questions because it is easy for all of you, um, which it, it might be. Uh, then I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you Friday. Have a good rest of your week. Thank you.